Um, my name is Parker Higgins. Uh, I work just across the bay in San Francisco at a legal nonprofit called the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Um, we work on defending civil liberties uh, when they come into contact with technology issues. Um, I'd like to start by thanking the Peace and Justice Commission and the Police Review Commission for organizing this event and to uh, the Council of the City of Berkeley for taking these commission's recommendations into account. Um, as I hope to convey this evening, these are very serious issues and one that Berkeley should absolutely take the time to get right. Um, as with many of the other speakers tonight, uh, my organization and I have been involved in this debate at, on both a national level and at a local level, um, including testifying at the hearing in February that we had mentioned uh, just a few minutes away for the Alameda County Supervisors. Um, in that case in particular, uh, we have been working on uh, correcting some of the misconceptions that, that really started with some public officials about what these proposed drones are and aren't capable of and what they should and shouldn't be used for. Um, the main point I want to get across today, uh, it sort of falls within point three of, of Linda's structure, um, uh, is that Berkeley needs to be a leader in its policies uh, and the way it needs to lead is by creating thoughtful and substantive rules for how drones may be used and operated especially by law enforcement, and that's because uh, of the, really the, the rate of progress of this technology. Um, what's more is that these rules need to go beyond just the technology that we're looking at today and really address the root issues that, that these technologies raise. Um, in particular, uh, we've heard arguments from law enforcement agencies all over the country that drones don't need to be regulated because, well, they'll concede that they're smaller, quieter, and cheaper than helicopters, they also are hampered by a range of technical limitations. Um, and those limitations may be the, the amount of flight time they have or the resolution of the camera, the amount of onboard storage. Uh, the point I want to make tonight, and it'll be one that I think comes up over and over again, is that we shouldn't rely on these technical limitations uh, alone to shape the policy in ways that we want. Um, surveillance drones, in fact, are made of many of the same components as modern smartphones. Uh, the cost for these components, of course, not just with drone manufacturing, but with smartphone manufacturing, are dropping fast. And that's happening at the same time that the capabilities are increasing dramatically. Uh, it's definitely important to remember that there's a distinction between the domestic drones that law enforcement wants and the ones that our military is using. Um, but we should also be mindful of the fact that uh, the domestic drones of tomorrow often incorporate the developments and technology of military drones today. Um, so in that spirit, I'd like to underscore the current and future capabilities of this technology. Um, drones can be equipped with all different kinds of surveillance equipment. Uh, almost all that, that we'll discuss carry some sort of camera with recording capabilities, and some uh, newer high-definition cameras, the ones that are used by the military, are so powerful they can see the color of your shoelaces from a mile away. Um, of course, drones can also be equipped with infrared or heat sensors, uh, technology that can, as, as Linda mentioned, can be equipped to see through walls, uh, and, and analysis on board that can do facial recognition or, uh, or read license plates. Um, police could use signals interception technology on a drone to grab a person's GPS coordinates or even text messages and phone calls uh, out, of, out of the air. Um, through distributed video, drones can work in concert like a swarm of insects uh, to provide comprehensive surveillance. And it's cheap to store this data and all this information uh, so, so that cost shouldn't be considered a factor in, uh, in preventing police from storing it indefinitely or sharing it with other government agencies. This can be done with large drones that can see entire cities. Um, or it can be done with tiny drones, uh, it's sometimes hard to see by the naked eye, or that can fly for hours and days at a time, or even land on rooftops. The kind of drones that most law enforcement agencies are looking at now can only fly for 30 to 60 minutes uh, before they need to be recharged. But again, this is an area where it's, it's really important to consider how rapidly this technology is advancing and what's on the horizon. Um, we saw the the uh, model that the Alameda County Sheriff wanted. Uh, similar in, in shape and size is, is a drone called, uh, by Lockheed Martin, uh, that's called the Stalker. That weighs 13.2 pounds, it's called the Stalker. Um, <laughs> uh, they, they name them differently for the military. Uh, 
that that's around the same weight as the drone that the sheriff's, sheriff's office wants, and it's within the FAA's weight limits. Um, and that can be, uh, it's been tested, it can be recharged from the ground by a laser, uh, and it can stay in the air for at least 48 hours. They stopped the test after 48 hours because it was still in the air. Uh, this isn't science fiction, this is real technology that exists today. Uh, Lockheed Martin has posted uh, a demonstration of this of this drone on its YouTube channel, and you can you can watch it for yourself. Um, of course, another thing to consider for the uh, for the city is that this issue has voters and constituents really up in arms on both the left and the right. Um, it, it has, as we've seen across the country and you know, on both sides of the aisle, uh, in at least 39 states, legislators have considered or passed bills that would restrict drone use in the name of privacy. Um, just the other day, the National Conference of State Legislators published a map showing uh, the states that are considering it, and really it's, it's striking. Uh, there's no region in the country that isn't represented, and, uh, and the entire map is lit up with, with states that are considering this. Um, in many cases, these bills have uh, made unlikely allies of, of you know, the furthest left Democrats and the furthest right Republicans who would normally uh, keep their distance from each other. Um, and we've seen this as an election issue. Uh, just to go back to, to uh, Linda's point and the questions about the, the TSA um, scanners, we've seen this play out in Seattle, uh, where originally uh, the, uh, the, the sheriff's office wanted to purchase drones uh, without informing the city. And, and when this when this came up, it was a real uh, a real public backlash, and this led to not just uh, new privacy regulations, but the, the sheriff having to spend taxpayer money returning these drones to the manufacturer. And so this is this is a thing that we really need to be uh, thoughtful about and develop the right way. Um, I think I'm running out of time, uh, so I'd like to save the remainder for questions. 